Yesterday was plumbing day, and if you care a lot about having things exactly right and not messing up and not making any holes that are accidental, I recommend that you might not be in your house while plumbers are installing drains. The drain line, you can see behind me here, we've got it going down, but it also has to go up. If you think about it, your plumbing system is actually like a tree, but there's only one, in this house at least, there's only one trunk that goes out through the top, and it actually goes out through a wall, not through the roof. You'll see that in an upcoming video. And on the bottom, there's only one trunk that goes down. So all the roots and the branches basically are what meet up in the middle. And that is why when the plumbing team came in here, there were five guys. They did not speak very much to me. I speak a little bit of Spanish, but with these guys, like evidently I didn't know how to speak Spanish at all. They didn't understand a single thing that I said. Um, or it was just everything they were asking me was way over my head. So they came in within 60 seconds. They were drilling holes in everything. And it was terrifying. It was the most disturbing day of a very disturbing build so far. So we've got two years in. Uh, now we have, you can see the plumbing system. This is all PVC. They were so fast. It was five guys one day. And they finished this entire house, drain line wise. Let me show you what we've got going on here. Um, so... What I started with, as you know, this entire house, everything you see here, which is mostly built, except for now that we're getting to electrical and plumbing, built by me and my parents, was built in 3D modeling. And so now I am going to be doing the plumbing, the water system. You want to get a professional to do the drain line stuff, because if you don't understand how plumbing works, drain lines are going to be your downfall. The water piping, though, anybody can do if you have experience with this. So... I uh, mapped out the five zones. We've got kitchen, powder room, master suite and laundry, studio bathroom, and floor two bathroom, which turned into, on a giant piece of cardboard that my daughters were painting on, turned into this, which looks terrible, and no one would really want to read this. Again, this is just for me. But after some refining, turned into this. So I'm going to give you a quick tour of how the system works. So we're gonna come in from the ground, and I, I laid this 500 linear feet of uh, water pipe when we first bought this piece of property. First you have a shutoff valve, then we hit a pressure reduction valve. That takes it down from street pressure to house pressure, which is around like 50, 60 uh, PSI, I think. The fin monitoring system is the leak detection system and the use monitoring system. Then we have a T. This is the symbol for T. Everything here is three quarters. We, we're coming in three quarters from the ground outside. Unless it's noted, then we go three quarters. This is what my plumber, uh, Brian Hubbard, taught me. You, If you want to go around something, so we've got a filter, carbon filter, and a, so a water softener. And if I want to be able to service these later, what I need is three shutoffs. So I go out on the T, I have a shutoff there that's normally gonna be closed. I have a shutoff before and after the device, and then I tee back in at the end of this. And if I wanna tee, you know, shut this off, I shut this and this off. This second one is to make sure that water doesn't push back this way into it. Then we tee off and we begin our um, system. Now this is not a home run system, as you can see here. Home run means that every single fixture goes all the way back to the source. That is, that kills on the length of pipe that you use. So. We tee off and we go this way. Now we have a tee that goes to the powder room and to the kitchen. Each of those has a shutoff so that I can shut off individual um, you know, zones if I need to service something. Come down here, we've got a tee that goes off to a half and a half. We've got the toilet and the lavatory. The lavatory is gonna have its own water heater. You notice that there's not a water heater in it. That's because we're using chronomite point of use water heaters. I have five water heaters each one for each of my my zones. So this one has the tiniest water heater. It's uh, gonna live under the cabinet under this lavatory. And by the way, we call this not a sink, but a lavatory because the letter L is then uh, easily used for what is most people call a sink. T is for toilet, B is for bathtub, um, S is for sink, or S is for shower, excuse me. We tee off, we go to the hot line and to the cold line. I'm gonna have a silcock outside that takes both hot and cold water because we're gonna someday eventually have a tub out on the back deck um, because bathing outdoors is fun and it feels like vacation. So we tee off first. 
to be able to go up to my hotline and I'm gonna tee off from there for my cold. This tee is gonna come up here to and be the cold for my sill and also be my reverse osmosis system. And again, I've got this before and after. Ooh, I'm missing a uh, shutoff valve right there. Let me make a note of that. Then we tee back in and we've got a triple. Now these are the things that are the little tiny manifolds that you use when you're using PEX. So I'm able to come in here and go into a manifold that has three legs off of it, each of which is a half inch, because half inch is how you feed individual things. Down here, we have a shutoff valve before the water heater so I can serve this water heater sometime if I need to. Then I just have a simple two way after the water heater, I go to the sink and to the silcock outside. This one feeds the refrigerator, which uh, makes ice, the drink station, which is just like the little beverage sink, um, and then the pot filler here after the reverse osmosis system. Uh, okay, then we come off here, we go to the master suite, we tee off, again, shut off valve so that I can service the master. Um, this leg up here is gonna go up to floor two and this leg goes out to the studio. So master wise, we split off, we're gonna go cold side, hot side. On the hot side, shut off valve before the water heater. Again, individual water heater. Then a T down to the sill. Why am I teeing off for these sills? And it's because the sill cock, the one that I want actually has three quarter inch um, connections. And if I come down to one of these manifolds, they do not make these manifolds with a three quarter inch uh, option, unless you have one that goes on the way out. But this one has eight. Both of these have eight uh, outlets. Neither of those is made with a, um, uh, a through that's a three quarter inch. So on both of these, we've got uh, lavatory one, lavatory two, which is the two sinks for our uh, master suite, shower, bathtub, uh, the washer lavatory, which is in the laundry room, the washer, that's the clothes washer. Then we've got uh, one that's capped off here. We've got the toilet lavatory, which is a little sink that's inside the uh, toilet room, uh, et cetera. Same thing over here, easy peasy. And again, this silcock down here also has hot and cold. That's for being able to wash cars and stuff like that. It's kind of an interesting feature. I just wanted to try that out. We go up to the second floor, tee off, cold side, uh, cut off, and then the hot side, water heater, dedicated again. This one's gonna go inside the cabinet. We got lavatory, lavatory, bath and shower, and then likewise here. And then we had a four through. This is what's kind of an interesting thing. These. Manifolds come with a three quarter inch in and a three quarter inch out sometimes in the smaller ones. So we've got the two sinks, the bath and the shower. And then I have a fifth one. And instead of getting a six and capping one off, I just get the four through and come out three quarter inch here, reduce it down to a half inch to go to the toilet. Then when we go out to the uh, studio, we tee off for the cold, lavatory, toilet, shower, tee off for the water heater, again, shut off and then just a simple tea for the lavatory and the shower on the hot side. So that is the map, and I actually am very proud to um, show that off. I think that this is, I feel like I've been through plumbing school. So real quick, let me just show you around what's going on right now. We've got kitchen, there's the island, there is the uh, trap, uh, not the trap, but the what will be the trap ultimately for the beverage station. And by the way, I mentioned I have one vent in this entire house. It's gonna be a two inch PVC vent that's going out through the top of the house. Mine goes out through a wall, not the roof. You do not have to go through the roof. And the, these guys came in yesterday and because they were speaking Spanish, that was like, maybe my accent was really weird. I don't know where exactly these guys were from, but they, they talked very little and did a lot. Um, they said, oh, we need two vents. We need one for over here. And I started freaking out because like now I'm drilling a hole in another wall. I did not want to do that. So uh, my plumber showed up, thank goodness, because he speaks technical. He doesn't speak any better Spanish than me, but he knows what they're talking about. And he said, oh, no, no, it's fine. We're going to use an air-assisted vent instead. I will show off what that is later. But uh, essentially down here, we've got the master suite. Um, I want to show you the stuff that's upstairs because that's the interesting part real quick. This place stank this morning like PVC glue. Um, so here we've got a vent coming in from the master suite. It comes up and it goes through. And this is where they were like drilling holes like crazy. So we drilled all these holes. You got to make sure that if they're drilling through stuff that's structural, that's load bearing, you know, weight bearing walls, 
which like this one is. Um, this, not so much, this is just an interior. This is the only little attic space that's in the house. Anyway, when they come in through all this stuff, they're, they're making holes and the holes have to be the certain size. And again, they were just moving so fast and it was so technical and it was in three dimensions. I could not follow it at all. I'm, I'm pretty good at overseeing the siding crew and the roofing crew and I can watch what they're doing and <clears throat> keep my head on and say, ooh, no, please don't do it like that, do it like this. These guys were moving so fast. There's so many different crews doing it at the same time, making holes for things that I didn't understand what the holes were for. Anyway, it was, it was very intense. So we're coming up here. We've got the stub outs for the drains for the two sinks in the uh, floor two bathroom and then goes up to the vent. This vent goes out through this wall up there. There's a T. This one is the, the funny one. Anyway, the T goes out through the wall right there and uh, it's under the eave. And that's okay because my eaves are bolt-on. We do not have any way for air to get from outside into my vented uh, soffit and then to inside. This is an airtight connection. You wouldn't want to do that if you had like a vented attic, for example. So this right here, you can see we've got protector plates all along so that we're not going to be messing with um, the PVC pipe if we come along and try to, you know, attach drywall. This... Oh, thank God I did not extend this beam all the way because this uh, roof joist right here that runs down along the entire, you can see the roof joists in there for the big room. That's a 26 foot uh, span there. This one sits on the exterior wall. So I thought, oh, we don't need to have this LVL, this double LVL go all the way to, the, to here. And thank goodness I did not because these guys needed the space to be able to run the vent down to the studio bathroom, which is, let me show you, way down there. So you can see it running through the roof, going all the way to down there. My plumber advised me that he does not like to use those air-assisted vent systems. A vent is just what keeps the, you know, the plumbing system from being pressurized, basically. So it's gonna allow air to be sucked in there when there's a vacuum. Um, so he says if you can go all the way to outside, at the top and go all the way to gravity in the bottom. Don't use pumps to try and get stuff up. Like there are toilets, for example, that you can use that have pumps built into them so you can get, you know, you're in a basement and you need to get up and above the drain line again. It's just another thing that's gonna require maintenance and go bad. So this has been a real education for me. It doesn't have much to do with performance except for the fact that it's uh, really scary to try and think about trying to control all of the indoor physics, chemistry, and microbiology with all of this action happening in the house behind you. And uh, I hope that the rest of the subcontractors as we go are a little bit slower and a little bit less well-staffed and a little less efficient with their work. Uh, please do comment if you have other things to add about plumbing. Like and subscribe. Tune in next time.